Hello, everyone, and welcome to our weekly discussion series that's hosted by the Chaldean Cultural Center in collaboration with U of M Detroit Center, Unique Voices in Films, and CNN TV. I'm your host, We Am Nemu, and our guest today is Tammy Turgeon. Hello, Tammy. Hi, We Am. How are you? I'm good. I'm good. So, Tammy is. Um, the director of one of my favorite places, Sterling Heights Public Library. So she's been um, the director since 2007. She has a master's degree in library and information science from Wayne State University and an undergraduate degree in elementary education from the University of Michigan. Go blue. <laughs> <laughs> Tammy was named Michigan Library Association Librarian of the Year in 2016. She pre previously worked as a director of suburban library cooperatives, which involved working with all of the libraries in Macomb County, Troy, and Harper Woods to provide delivery services, group purchasing, and running a shared automation system. So you are on the board of... Um, many organizations, including um, the Macomb Literacy Partners, uh, Book and Author Society. I, you know, That's I remember- That's how I met you. <laughs> <laughs> and I just, I remember that when I was reading the bio, um, it wasn't that long ago, but you know, I, I don't know yeah. what's going on. So, and I said, oh my gosh, that's where we connected. Yeah. Yeah. yeah so Small world. It's a small world. And you know what? I really, um, I'm, I'm so glad that you're joining us today because I do love the Sterling Heights Library. I've been, since I came to the United States in uh, February, 1981. Wow. So yeah, this is our anniversary month here. Um, the We always stayed almost like we, we lived in Shelby Township. And then shortly afterwards, we were in the Sterling Heights area and that's where we remained. And so, um, and I've watched the library grow and develop and change. Um, so I'm really looking forward uh, to hearing more about the library. And some of this, by the way, just naturally, I've written about uh, in my books just because I visit there so much and there's such a uh, rich history to it. Um, but before we get into all of that, uh, let's hear a little bit about your childhood, where you were born and what influenced you to, you know, what were your influences that led you to the love of books and libraries? So um, I was born in Livonia, Michigan. That's where I uh, grew up. And um, I started my love of libraries. And um, my first job was as a library page at the Livonia uh, Carl Sandburg Branch Library. But when I was younger, my dad would take me to the library and he would be doing research on stocks and things like that. And I was... Um, you know, just loving looking at the books, grabbing as many as I could. That's the thing I loved is, you know, you had your library account and you could check out all these books, take them home. They trusted you to take them home, bring them back. Um, so my first real job as the library page, I would shelve books. Um, I would retrieve magazines from the back room. I would show films to children on Saturdays. Um, and I just love you know, holding books, looking at books. Um, so really working in a library is like the best job. Well, I do feel jealous when I see you guys sitting around all these books all the time. And it's <laughs> like, you know, you know, we, we don't get like, to sit and just I, read. I do I have to bring them home, but it's nice to be, ex they're, they're accessible. So I can grab a book. I just grabbed a book. Um, yesterday on Hawaii because I'm hoping to have a trip to Hawaii. I've never been there before. So it was great. I could just go over to the shelf, grab a book before I went home. <laughs> yeah. I realized from even myself asking you guys so many questions that you guys don't get the luxury of just sitting around. <laughs> you actually but a lot of us do read. To help us. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We do read when we're at home. So, you know, it's, it's fun. <laughs> yeah. But for, to choose. So when you go into a library environment and, you know, I know that people um, from the times that uh, eBooks started coming out and mm -hmm. people thought, okay, this is the end of, of books or this is the end of that. And that's obviously not true. Um, but there's this feeling when you go into a library um, and even more so than a bookstore. I like going to bookstores too, but library mm -hmm. it just feels older and mm -hmm. um, almost more intense. The, the, the research that you're going to do, you just, it just something about it takes you 
many, many different places. Um, but, you know, to choose a career in, in the library and education field, did that come naturally mm -hmm. or is it just because you were there and it just, I, did that just come naturally or what was yeah, that? Yeah, no, I actually. That happened that led you Yeah, to when, I, when I went to um, the University of Michigan, I actually was in the School of Engineering. I wanted to be a chemical engineer and I went to school for that first year and decided, yeah, I don't want to be a chemical engineer. And since I had worked in the library, you know, I was like, and I, and I had always thought, well, maybe teaching. So I did switch to the school of education and um, got my degree in elementary education. And I thought, okay, I can be a school media specialist as a teacher. I could get my master's in library science and become the school media specialist. And I had substitute taught for a year and I did not like it. I couldn't find a regular position. So I decided I'm going to go get a job as um, I'm going to go get my degree in library science. I went to Wayne State um, while I got a job at the Troy Public Library. So I worked at the Troy Library while I went to school for library science and said, you know what, I really like public libraries. I'm going to stick with public libraries. And it kind of, you know, when I was at U of M, I worked in the undergraduate library, you know, as a, you know, couple day a week job. And then one summer I worked in the beer building at U of M and that housed rare books and dissertations that people could come to the reading room and I would go get their documents that they wanted. Um, so that really kind of got me more interested in working in libraries as a career. And um, it's it's been so wonderful. I love helping people. Um, meeting a lot of different people, you know, it's just a good environment. So I think I made the right choice. And how long were you at the Troy Library for? I used to go there a lot too with my niece. Oh yeah, before. I was there from 92 until 94. Okay. And then after that, I went to the cooperative, which that's when I ran the automation system and eventually mm -hmm. became the director there. And then, and it was located in Sterling Heights. So when the position became open at the Sterling Heights Library to become director, it was kind of a easy transition. I was already in the area. I knew the Sterling Heights Library. Um, so, and I still, I live in Troy, so it's not a far commute. <laughs> yeah. yeah, and those are, yeah, they're, they're right kind of, I'm in the center of them. So I was often going back and forth. They had the, they still do the kids story time a lot of kids story time at Troy Library. I used to drag yes. out my nieces and nephews there. Yeah, yeah. yeah. No, it's a great library too. Yeah. And what's yeah. nice too is that libraries um, as a profession, we love to share. Um, we share resources, we share ideas, you know, with each other. So we, we help each other, we're not in competition. So it's great when there are people that use multiple libraries. Yes. And um, so you were saying about, you said, I know about the Sterling Heights Library, but, you know, I had the chance to um, learn a little bit about the history of the library, oh, um, yeah. including um, the Upton House that's right next to it. That was, yeah. yeah. And if you can share a little bit about that, because, you know, sure. that Upton House, when I used to pass it, I always wondered, like, what is this building? And then I <laughs> went and I researched it and I found out, oh, you can visit in there. And oh my gosh, especially I went through uh, there during the holidays. It's yes. Just an amazing experience. Decorated. Please share that with us. Sure. Um, so the Sterling Heights Library was established in 1971. Um, and it actually was in the basement of the Sterling Heights City Hall. Um, and then it moved to a ranch house that was in our current parking lot in 1974. And then we moved into a our current building in um, 1979. And we got an addition in 2000 that added a larger children's area and a programming center. And then most recently in 2021, we had a renovation um, where we got, we added a teen room, we added a maker space, we got some new furniture, paint, carpet. Um, but the Upton house is actually also like in the parking lot of Sterling Heights uh, City Hall, our complex that has City Hall, the library, the court, the police station, and across the way is Dodge Park and the community center. So in that whole area, there's this house called the Upton House. It's now it's the Upton House Museum. And I'm actually the staff liaison to the historical commission that um, takes care of the house. 
Uh, but that house has always been there. The actual owners, they had that um, house built, William and Sarah Upton, they had that house built in 1866-67. And they owned all the property where the city hall complex is now down to Stevenson High School. That's just down the street from us and across the across Utica Road, um, Dodge Park. So that was all part of their property. Um, so they were more uh, of our wealthier residents in uh, Sterling Township at the time. And, um, you know, they had apple orchards and they fished in the Clinton River. Um, it, it was, it's just a neat um, addition to the city of Sterling Heights because we've got this history that building's always been in that location. It wasn't moved from another location. So we are gradually adding more and more historical documents and information about the area, about Sterling Heights to um, to the house. And the Historical Commission does a great job trying to collect uh, memorabilia. So I want to mention um, that one of the reasons we invited you from the Sterling Heights Library, aside from the fact, you know, being biased that this is my favorite <laughs> and I live here in Sterling Heights. <laughs> but there are other reasons. <laughs> so um, I often mention how, you know, Michigan has the largest population of Chaldeans in the world. Okay. Yes. Yeah. It, in the world, since 2014, we, it was the second to Iraq until what happened with ISIS. And then this wow. state became the largest population of Chaldeans in the world. So imagine, I always say, imagine how important this state is for us. And um, the Chaldean Cultural Center houses the world's first and only Chaldean museum. Wow. Um, yeah, this state is the only place, it's the only region that has um, organizations catering to the Chaldeans. Um, other places, other regions, which of course California has a large population and other yeah. countries have a, a population of Chaldeans, but they don't necessarily have organizations. They mostly have, they work with their church to uh -huh. keep um, their census to do a cultural, like recently um, we were in, in Vegas and I know that there's a community there, but the church takes care of you know all their events and things like that and they do an amazing job but yeah. but um but then to top it off uh, in michigan outside of being the having the largest uh, population of chaldeans sterling heights has the largest population of chaldeans in michigan oh wow yeah that's amazing it, it is and so this city which is often nicknamed little baghdad um, even, you know, you could look this up and, and they've, they've had many people nickname it Little Baghdad just because at every corner, as you might have seen, there's all these like shops that are... Um, well, I was going to say there's wonderful food. <laughs> we have great <laughs> restaurants. Everybody recognizes the food. I mean, you can smell it when I take my walks. I'll like smell shish kebab, like the fumes coming, <laughs> and I'll get hungry for like in the morning. I don't even eat breakfast, and I'm like, ready to eat something. Um, so this city for our community means so much, and so Sterling Heights Library, you know, having this kind of the the whole city just has such history and has been home to many communities um, yeah. in the past. You know, it's really a melting pot. Uh, I mm -hmm. wanted you to share a little bit about that. I know you have, um, what's it called? The I don't want to say it in a wrong, a cultural, cultural, oh, the cultural exchange. On March 8th, by the way. Yes. Um, so that's just, you know, like, that's a week away. That's next right? Next Friday. Yeah, next yes. week. Yeah, so tell us a little bit about your knowledge about the communities that encompass sure. um, Heights, which I think this for me is the most beautiful part about this city. But I I love how Sterling Heights Library um, and just the city in general, but the library does celebrate so many in so many different ways. But share share about that event and the communities that live sure. in. Sure. So the ethnic uh, community committee. That was formed in 1990, and they're the organizers of the cultural exchange, which I know has been going on for so many years. I don't remember when it exactly started, but when I started here 16 years ago, it was going on. So it's like an annual celebration of all the cultures in Sterling Heights. And I knew our Chaldean population was very large, but I didn't know it was the biggest in Michigan. So thank you for that information. But the event is actually to celebrate all the cultures that call Sterling Heights home. 
and it includes food tastings, uh, cultural displays, dance performances. Um, and I know this year I looked up the information um, that the ethnicities represented in either food or displays or dancing. Um, we've got African American, Albanian, Bulgarian, Chaldean, Filipino, German, Hispanic, Indian, Iraqi, Italian, Macedonian, Polish, Scottish, Slovakian, and Turkish. So all of those ethnicities are represented at the event. It is a great event because I think Sterling Heights, a big part of not only our library, but the city is very welcoming to all cultures. We actually have at the library, it's called the Anne Marie Given International Language Collection. And we collect um, books in 20 languages. And we have um, one of our former retired librarians, Ed Pyatt, he actually started the collection in memory of his wife, Anne Marie Given. And uh, he donates every year. And now he's established a fund at the Sterling Heights Community Foundation to support that collection. So we do add materials to it. And we've got children's books as well as adult. Uh, but it's nice because people do come in and want to read something from their native language or they're learning a new language and they want to read materials from that language. So that's kind of our little contribution um, to supporting those that um, speak other languages and read other languages. And we also try and have um, programs at the library, you know, that represent uh, the people in the library. You know, we'll get program ideas from um, residents um, or our librarians, you know, if they're interested in a certain topic or, um, you know, that they'll try and do a program on it. And depending on the interest level, if we get a lot of people that are interested in something, then we continue it. We have um, like our puzzle competition. Never thought about doing that. We did it a few years ago and it was so popular. Now we do it regularly. So uh, depending on what our residents are interested in, we do surveys, you know, to find out, um, you know, people are interested in cooking. Uh, so we actually have a former chef as one of our librarians, Brent. And he does a cooking demo online. So we put it on our Facebook page. Uh, but he does it online once a month. Just a little cooking demo for people to, you know, help them learn something new. That's what we're all about. Learning new things, um, educating yourself, um, just exploring and, and trying new things and wanting to um, improve yourself. So that evening sounds like so much fun. Okay, oh, I have is. not I heard of that many extent. different communities. Is this um is this outside gonna? It or? is. It is inside at the Sterling Heights Community Center, and it's oh, from six to ten p.m. Thank you for um, correcting. Next Friday. Okay. Yeah, yes, yeah. It's, it's great. They have a lot of space there, so they've got a room that has a stage that yeah. all the different dance groups uh, perform, and then they have even uh, cultural organizations that are in the city actually can have tables that have information, um, and then they have food tastings. Um, so yeah, it's it's great. You can learn a lot, you have fun, and just try something new. Sounds like a great deal of fun. And you know what? I don't see anything on my calendar that day. So I'm going to use on that one. And, you know, it, when you were talking about all these different communities. Um, so for a while, my family was going to Felipe's um, and w they have a DJ who um, plays Albanian music. Uh, oh. And songs and Chaldean, because this is the communities that show up. Right. And we started learning each other's dances. We we had such a blast. And I got to tell you this, when you were describing the event and all these different communities, I mean, anytime you get dancing and food <laughs> into the picture, you start not knowing. <laughs> uh, you know, things like that. And um, when we would go to Philippines, they, they have a DJ, um, I, I think it's just on the weekends. But the way everybody just wanted, we were either watching the other dances and then we would come, you know, once we felt a little bit confident enough, mm -hmm. you know, we would come in and start dancing with them. And I think it creates, this is how friendships for me are, are formed by yes. um this kind of an exchange. It really has to be from the heart. It just uh -huh. can't be like talking about it, which this is 
to me is important too. But sometimes you have to put all that aside and just kind of join in and enjoy the process. Yeah, experience it. Experience it, right. There's nothing like experiencing another culture and uh, another community. So yeah. anyways, congratulations for, for having- Yeah, it's a great <laughs> event. And actually I don't do much for it other than have a table there. Our community relations department does so much work in working with the ethnic community committee. They they do all the work, and um, but we just- love to join in and uh, be a part of it. <laughs> well, I know that um, recently I have received um, some emails. It seems like there's a lot of new things happening at the Sterling Heights Library. Did you want to share some of these uh, like new programs and new events that are sure. happening? Uh, so, yeah, our biggest thing, thanks for asking. Our biggest thing is our library of things. Um, we got a little bit of press on that on uh, channel two and channel four. So what a library of things is, is that we wanted to enrich people's lives by providing them with different resources um, included in the collection. You can borrow these items for a week, no cost. Um, we have a telescope, we have a podcasting kit, we have a set of um, lenses for your camera phone. We've got study aids that you can actually use in the library, um, like human um, models of the brain, heart, skeleton, chemistry model. Um, we've got educational toys for kids that you can borrow, um, portable projectors, um, uh, virtual reality headsets. Those have been the most popular uh, is the virtual reality headsets. Um, we've got, once it gets warmer, we've got um, ladder ball kit, a croquet kit, um, a giant Jenga kit that you can borrow. So it's um, all kinds of things that you can find on our website, www.shpl.net. You can look in our catalog and see all the list of things. Um, you do have to be a resident of Sterling Heights to use those, but a lot of libraries, if you're not a resident of Sterling Heights, you still have access to um, these types of materials. A lot of libraries have Library of Things collections, but the things we've had the longest have been our Wi-Fi hotspots. We've actually had those for almost 10 years where you can actually borrow a Wi-Fi hotspot for a week. If you're going someplace that doesn't have Wi-Fi, if you need it at your home for whatever reason, um, it's it's free internet for a week that you can borrow and hook up multiple devices. Um, so that's been very popular. And then a few years ago, we added um, bikes. We have two adult bikes and two kids bikes that you can borrow for two hours and you can take them over to Dodge Park. Um, we had one family come and the mom didn't ride a bike, um, but her kids knew how to ride bikes, but they didn't have bikes. So she actually brought them to the library. The kids borrowed the bikes. They were so excited. You know, that's what that's what makes the library job so great is that we're able to make people smile, um, add to their lives. Um, you know, it's just it's just a great thing. And this library of things has has gotten some new interest from people that maybe hadn't been to the library in a while, you know, to borrow something. You know, we've got a an engraver pen, um, all kinds of uh, different tools. And and we're looking to add more uh, depending on what people's interests are. You know, um, as you were talking, and this is all so fascinating that the library continues to have new programs and new events. And when we had COVID, you know, the pandemic for a while seemed like it was stopping life. And, and well, it did. Yeah. It life everywhere, right? <laughs> Yes. Uh, but I know I remember that the library, this is when I started um, reading, w listening to audiobooks. That, that yeah. was one good thing that happened. And the library was very helpful. It started with, I forgot the program I have it on my phone, but this is what was started me, uh, Libby. Libby, yes. <laughs> yes, I was, I was not good. good with the phone. I'm like, oh, how do you do this? And I'm asking your librarian online and she's like, well, you do this and you do that. Anyway, so that I, I kept, I stayed involved somehow or another. I also yes. know that you started bringing in films um, through yes. another site. Um, and, and that was also, uh, by the way, I'm part of the writers group from there. I don't want to. Oh, forget. yeah. We have a great creative writers group. So yeah, very. really expanded, I think, since the pandemic. You know, a lot of people, you couldn't really do much. You were at home. So. Well, I think a lot of people started writing, um, writing about their experiences or writing fiction. And that group's really supportive. Um, Terry 
Hoynatsky uh, that runs it. Uh, she volunteers to run it and um, she does a great job just getting. She's amazing. She's getting she's everyone amazing. together. We had a, a writer's group um, at, at the Chaldean Cultural Center that oh. was um, sponsored by the Authors Guild of America. And uh, we had the writers group come and and we did like a little um coming up like a new year's resolution for writers um oh. but she has done she stuck around this whole time and made the um group available online and then once things were safe then she she, she alternates you know and so we really appreciate the kind of work that she does for what she's doing is creating the space for writers yes and, and um, like you said, like community, you know, it's all about community and meeting new right. people and learning new things and making that connection. So yeah. she's providing the space to do that. And um, yeah, yeah, she's she's wonderful. <laughs> she's, so it's like every time we talk about anything as, as we're doing right now, we're realizing there's so much more to the library. Um, yeah. So obviously it, it didn't hinder the library in ways when you guys open, you just found new avenues or new ways to reach people and readers? So during the pandemic, you know, we did have to close down um, for a little while. And then we started curbside delivery, which was so popular. Everyone wanted to get out, but you couldn't get in anywhere. So we would bring items to people's cars. They'd put items on holds and we'd bring them out there. Um, yeah, so that was a little different. And you know, since the pandemic, we do have um, a lot of people that switched over to using li our Libby app, um, which almost every library in the state has access to that app. So if you have a library card, you can probably go download the Libby app, put your library card number in. You have access to digital books, um, digital audio books, like you had mentioned. Um, we also have a service called Hoopla, which has movies and music and audiobooks and um, magazines, online magazines we've got. And we've uh, purchased a s service called Canopy, which has a lot of movies on it, uh, children's books um, that are, you know, kind of like uh, short films. Um, so that really did expand the use of dig our digital resources. But we are seeing more and more people come back in person, wanting to attend programs. Um, for a while, we limited the size of the number of people that could come to programs, but we're starting to expand that. We also have done some outdoor programming, which a lot of libraries kind of switched to doing more outdoor, um, more take home kind of things, doing crafts. Um, so it was a challenge during um, the pandemic, but I think a lot of libraries stepped up and realized, you know, people need their library. So we wanted to make sure we were there for them. So, uh, Tammy, we only have a couple of minutes left. Um, I mean, I think we both have the same love for books and the library environment, and we can go on forever just talking about Yes, books. yes, we can. <laughs> because of that. But I do encourage people, especially like for me, even before I became a mother, I used to take my nieces and nephews to the libraries. Then when I became a mother, I used I continued to do that, you know, and at some, at some point they, they have their own ways and they want to go on their own times and do their own thing. But it's so important, especially during the first years. Um, and, and I was always, whether it was the Troy Library or Sterling Heights, like Sterling Heights Library, always uh -huh. um, putting my foot there somehow with them. Um, what last words would you give to the community um, in general about? Yeah, I, I love our residents and I'm grateful to be working in such a great library and a job that I love. I can help people learn new things and make their lives better. And, um, you know, our mission at Sterling Heights is encouraging innovative living through literacy, discovery and community. You know, we're always striving to provide excellent service and be a welcoming place for all. And I hope that everyone comes to our library or their local library because I think they'll find a lot of things that they didn't realize their library had. Um, but we want to encourage people to have their their little ones visit the library um, to get them started so that they've got a great start to starting school. Yes. And you know what? Libraries are healthy environments for people. It's very healthy for the mind when you go in there, even if you are bringing your own book from home and just yes. in a quiet environment as 
versus it's a stress reliever. It's a stress reliever. And it's a good yeah. thing for kids to kind of be introduced to at an early age that regardless what the other world, uh, how it's drawing us in different directions, but this is like a, a, a just a different healthy environment to touch base with. Tammy, thank you so much. This was a wonderful interview and I look forward to seeing you at the Sterling Heights Library. <laughs> yes, thank you. It was so nice to see you again. And uh, I look forward to many more interviews interactions. Yes. But everyone have a great day. Thank you. Have a great day, everybody. Thank you for watching. Bye-bye.